Okay, law of science, 5.5. This is very easy. All you need to do is just memorize the formula, and the formula is really easy. So basically, you usually only use law of science on non-right triangles. Of course, you could use it on tri right triangles, but um, it's kind of a waste of time because you could do a faster you know, way with right triangles. Anyways, we usually use it on nine triangles. So kind of let's review a triangle. Let's say this is vertex A, B, and C. Then, what do we call this side that's opposite to A? Small A. Small A, that's correct. Oh. <laughs> yes. So the opposite side to the vertex, we use the lowercase letter. So that's what I wanted to kind of review, A, B, C. And uh, really easy. Uh, the formula is just sine of angle A over the side A is the same proportion to sine of angle B over side B, which is also to the same as sine of angle C over opposite side C. Basically, it's saying that that proportion is always consistent with it, within the triangle. We're going to do the easy case today, and then tomorrow we'll do the hard case. So tonight's homework will be like, Breeze. Okay, so when you're given two angles and one side, uh, that means only one triangle is possible to be formed. Two angles and one side. So uh, we can figure out everything we want to uh, using law of science. Okay, so this question says solve triangle ABC and you're given a few things. So let's go ahead and just draw ABC and then label everything we know. It tells us that angle A is 36 degrees, angle B is 48 degrees, and then side A is 8. When they say solve triangle, solve triangle just means uh, find everything. So let's go ahead and just <coughs> label everything we need. We need angle A, <coughs> excuse me, B, C, and we need um, side A, side B, side C. Some of them are already given, so we're only going to find the missing ones. All right, very easy. If you want to use law of science, there must be a pair of angle to its opposite side that is known. If there isn't, then you can't use law of science. So is there a pair that we know? Which angle and side? A. Correct. So we can just say that sine of angle A over opposite side A, that is sine of 36 degrees over 8, is equal to any of the other pairs that we want to choose from. Uh, which one do you guys want to solve next? <clears throat> B. Okay, so sine of 48 degrees over B, which is unknown. All right, very easy. You're just going to solve for B by using uh, cross multiply. So B sine 36 degrees is 8 sine 48 degrees. So there's really uh, not a lot to do with this one. Uh, just please make sure that your calculator is in degrees and not radian. That's the only difficult thing you want because in this chapter you're changing between radians and degrees a lot you want to just double check okay so b is 8 sine 48 degrees divided by sine 36 and another word of caution when you do type this in the calculator please make sure you put parentheses around this before you divide if you don't, uh, you may be taking the sign of all the stuff that you type after, and that's going to be incorrect. So please be careful. Okay, what do you guys get for B? Okay, 10.11, good. And C should be really easy to get, right? Because it's just a triangle sum. Huh? What? Oh. And then after that, can I find C using a Pythagorean theorem? 
No, it's not right triangle. You only use Pythagorean theorem if it's right triangle, but this one is not. Okay, so C is 96 degrees. And then side C is 13.54. Good? Easy? Okay. All right. Let's, I think, just try one more. Huh? <laughs> All right. Uh, let's have you try this. M find the missing sides and angles. Okay, so I just wanted to show you guys a trick on uh, using your calculator. So uh, you got to the point where if you're trying to find angle B, you would do sine 49 over 32, that's the ratio for A, and sine B, that's an unknown, over 28. So you would get to the point where um, you have, what is it, 28 sine 49, is equal to 32 sine b. So sine b is 28 sine 49 over 32. And if you want to try find try to find b, you will use inverse sine. So depending on how you actually put this in a calculator, if you just you know what took one more step and you said b is equal to inverse sine of this whole thing. Uh, that's totally fine. Uh, you would get the answer. Let's say you're like me. You didn't do that, and you took this part first. Then you're gonna you're gonna need to do an inverse sign on that number, right? That number is not a uh, integer, obviously. Uh, so you run into the situation where if you didn't round to uh, a lot of de decimal places, you might actually be truncating too many things. And if there are subsequent questions, you will get them wrong because your numbers are more and more off. So here's the trick on your calculator. So uh, let's. So once you put that in your calculator, you should get. I don't remember what number you get. Twenty nine sine forty nine divided by thirty two. Okay, so that is 0 0.66037. Okay, so can you guys do that? Uh, just to kind of do that with me. So put this part in your calculator. Okay, so put that part in the calculator and get to the point where the calculator displays 0 0.66037. And then just stop right there. Okay, I'm going to tell you kind of the trick. I don't know if you already know this, but just in case. Then what you want to do is basically you want the inverse sine of that number. So what you can do is tell the calculator to do an inverse sine of the result. So you can do an inverse sine. So use the inverse sine function. And then you're going to call out the previous answer. To call out the previous answer, you press second and then the negative sign. On top of negative sign, it says ANS. ANS means answer, meaning take the previous answer. That way you don't do any rounding. You're just saying whatever the calculator got as the last answer, use it. Does that make sense? Uh, that way you're not like looking at the calculator and you're typing in 0 0.66. You know, that's kind of a waste of time too. Second negative sign gets you to the answer. Okay, so just a shortcut. All right, so let me uh, give you the answers. Um, Angle B is 41.328, C is 89.672, uh, side A, C is 42.4. Are you guys good? Yeah. Easy. All right, a uh, word problem. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, so uh, let's look at this question. 
two observers are 400 feet apart on the opposite side of a flagpole. All right, there is a flagpole, two people on opposite sides. The angles of elevation, again, angles of elevation. <laughs> what does angles of elevation mean? Looking up, yes. So they're looking to the top of the pole. And that those angles are 19 and 21. 19, 21. Find the height of the flagpole. Oh, they're 400 feet apart. I didn't see that. All right, put your every, everything you know together. Try to solve this. Um, okay, so this angle here, obviously, you did triangle sum, so that's 140. This side is 223.009. I try to keep as many digits as I can. I didn't find the other one, but here's the hint. This is a right triangle. Second hint, use Sokotoa. Okay, the answer, the answer is 72.6. So I'm gonna help you out if you didn't get that. Basically, you're trying to find this, you're given this, and you know this. That makes opposite over hypotenuse in the right triangle. So sine of 19 degrees is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, and then just go from there. If your answer, huh? if your answer is a little bit off, just make sure that uh, you don't round too early. How do you know how long the bottom is? Sign. Huh? Because you know 90 degrees, and then you know that makes a 90 degrees, and you know that the angle of that one right triangle, and then you use all signs to get the side, and then uh, How do you know what that angle is, though? 90, 19, and then 180 minus 90 plus 19. No, so you don't know what this angle is. But you know there's 90 degrees, and then there's 19 degrees. Oh, uh, yes, you can do that. Okay. 